warm because it is cold everywhere. <laughs> yep. What are you talking about? It's only 33 degrees out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold we got centimeters of snow. Wow. <laughs> centimeters. Wow. I, I haven't even gotten that. I mean, we yeah. saw snow fall from the sky. Wow. <laughs> Half my coworkers in town, since we're all work from home, we're doing the whole oh, on this side of Tucson. Has it snowed yet? And it's like, guys, north side, we ain't got shit. <laughs> we see the fluff in the sky, but it ain't hitting the ground. Well, at least you could see it. <laughs> and we did get like two feet up in the mountains, so that was nice. Oh, yeah, Lemon got nice. pretty. Yeah, Lemon oh, was got it that much? Oh, yeah. I didn't realize it was even that much. And if they if they got it naturally, that means they can turn on the snow machines. <laughs> I did get a call from the alarm company that apparently. My work lost power, and they lost communication with us. Oh, no. With our building. <laughs> Fortunately, it's not my problem. I was just... <laughs> I was, I'm was. i like fifth on the list, and no one else answered the phone, so... <laughs> Silly you. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully everybody's got Monday off. I mean, I'm working Monday, but it's going to be like not working because everybody we work with is closed. I'm pretty sure I'm working Monday. I have it off, but I'm going to be in Atlanta. Yeah, I have it off. It's actually a Why? good question. I should look. I do have it off. I mean, generally the state doesn't do it, but the state kind of does it if you're a state or federal employee, so... I'm in the service industry. I do not have that day off. Yeah. I'm working. Most people two, don't. So I'm working ten till seven. Yeah, most people. That's don't a long day, off unless you're federal or what. <clears throat> I only have two days a week that are that long, but it's eight hours of uh, of giving the stretches and one hour for a lunch break. Oh, that's not bad then, I guess. Yeah, I, I only do that Monday, Wednesday, and then I work Friday, Saturday, like half or a little more than half days. That's it. Oh. It's just, it's a little more than part-time, but not quite full-time. Just enough so you get benefits or just enough so you don't? Uh, No benefits. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, it's a small company, though, so um, they don't even offer benefits. Oh, okay. So it's not like I'm missing out on anything. No. Well, I mean, I am, but I'm not. But it's good that you work for a small company. They're always easier to deal with. Yeah, for the most part, I'd say that's true. They're also the worst in, at abusing employees' rights. That's true, too. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> like, like, real bad. Yeah, they haven't... That hasn't happened up to this point, anyway. Well, fingers crossed. You know, they, they, they yeah. keep being cool and don't be douchey. Let's hope it stays that way. So let's see, scrolling through the Skype chat, we've got, we opted for the light freighter that has a hover car on board it that is church issued. Guess we're working for the church for our artifact retrieval. I mean, the nice thing is it also means your ship has church, you know, immunity, you know. Diplomatic immunity with the church. Right. Would you call that church immunity or would that be church sanctuary? <laughs> I think sanctuary works. 
Sanctuary. Does this religion offer sanctuary? It definitely offers sanctuary. Speaking of religion, because of course in the setting, it is basically, you know, Warhammer 40k gods. You know, the gods are really not good gods. They're really demons, basically. But the church sacrifices to save you because the church is nice like that. Yes. Right, church guys? We yeah. sacrifice ourselves so that you don't go to purgatory in hell. Yeah, but I'm not going to go to purgatory in hell anyway because I don't have a soul. Oh, look who's getting hopeful. <laughs> That's true. But we do have one other person with a soul. And don't forget the and, masses. And all of the masses, exactly, I was going to say. And all the people that we interact with. Because Starkana definitely has a messed up religious system. But it is nice to know that all the planets in all the galaxy, except for a certain group of dragon warlords, agree that the gods are the same everywhere. And you don't want to get their attention. Uh, and that is weird. And if need be, I totally put a hand out in there that's got the gods. Speaking of in there, um, I don't think I was invited to the game. Oh, I could have swore you were, but let me shoot you. I put the link in the Skype chat here, but let me go. Oh, maybe. oh, oh, oh. I, I'll, I'll get a fresh one for you so you don't have to go mining wow. up the You didn't send him a it. personal invite, so he felt oh, I just, <laughs> Wasn't good enough to just have I a general found it. Never mind. door to the... Door. No, I just overlooked it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine now. I apologize. This Saturday night shit talk <clears throat> starts. I, I see the way it is. And just in case, I'm pasting it in there right now. Just had to jump in... To I was almost going to paste it in the Roll20 chat, which would do you zero good. <laughs> right. There you go. It should jump you right on in there. So let's see. You've got a church-issued light freighter that's got its own hover car on board. We know that's a, that's a truism in the game here for Session Zero. Let's see. Did I have any other polls other than the one I just dropped in there today? Uh, so it's been a way back. Yep. So much prep work that we actually didn't do any prep work yet, except for I think you know David and Joseph feel plotting. <laughs> I mean, it's great plot having you guys make your decision of, hey, we're going to have a duo. Right? It's like, so, this is going to have some ch church basis here. It sounded fun. Add some character. Yep. So I totally threw out four plot. Holy crap. Looks like, uh, yeah, I see what you were saying, <laughs> Joseph. Uh, I, I voted on a couple things, but apparently one definitely skyrocketed ahead, which was the artifact retrieval. That the church, the Valeric, has learned of a powerful artifact hidden in an unexplored system beyond the edge. The priest, the paladin, and the driver, because those are the only careers I thought we had for sure, are chosen for a sacred mission to retrieve this artifact. However, they are not the only ones seeking its power. The journey takes them through treacherous territories, encountering rival factions and testing their resolve against unknown dangers of the uncharted regions. Now the question is, do you guys want to add either one of those number two spots, since it looks like Divine Prophecy and Colonial Uprising got uh, a tie for number two? Do we want to add Divine Prophecy on top of the artifact? I mean, it's like I mean, sure. for an artifact. I think that's kind of implied. You know, I, I I think we could probably lump all three together. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Well, except for one's in a war somewhere, so else. <clears throat> and... True, true. See, the, uh, like, who... th three scenarios I wrote up were actually the uprising and the prophecy. I basically made a bunch of scenarios I rolled up for space opera. 
with Starcana with those. And then I'm like, <clears throat> just to be safe, I'll throw in the uh, Artifact Retrieval and uh, Cold War Rekindled because, you know, I was totally watching Indiana Jones YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that has to be an option, right? Right. I had a quick question. You mentioned a driver or a pilot. Was that, <clears throat> is that Christopher? Uh, I was assuming somebody was taking a pilot. Well, I was right. making more of a, a a blazer, which is more of like a ground mm, more guy. More like a survivalist like, guy. Like a, Scout, trailblazer. Like a, yeah, like a scout trailblazer survivalist type. Like he can drive, but not he's not not a pilot. I can totally be a driver. Well, driver would be you then, because you're the driver. You're driving. That's ground vehicle. Yeah, <laughs> I would drive, but the <laughs> but the pilot well, is what we're lacking. That's what yeah, I mean. I meant oh. pilot. Yeah, we don't have a pilot. Then, unless <clears throat> somehow Joseph has that ability, nope. But I would not think so. Go up and can... say a prayer and push some buttons. It's in the five gods' hands now. Yeah, <laughs> I can be a pilot. So that would mean a pilot, a scout, and two on. two zealots. <laughs> does that fall with does uh, piloting fall within what your career was me yes, for, yeah um uh, well my my career was unformed at, at, not necessarily but i can i can adapt okay because um, i know for mine like i mean uh, piloting is only too green for me, so and not a career. So, I mean, as long as it's just simple, get in it, go to somewhere, and get out. We, I mean, we're just fine. Well, anybody can do that, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, just remember, we remember that the Jedi at the beginning of Episode One had a ship. Neither of them put points in piloting. Do you know what happened to their ship? It got blown up in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> Why would anybody in a, you know, choose to attack the church and risk the wrath of the gods? I mean, it's we are terrible. fine. <laughs> yeah. The worst part is the wrath of the gods or just their notice. Well, true. It is true. <laughs> it is just the notice, which you wouldn't want either. So. I mean, that is the one key fact there with the, the, the fact that the church is putting it upon their own shoulders to sacrifice themselves to protect the rest of you people. Yep. You people. Except those we draconic will. raider assholes. Like unfortunately, me. <laughs> unfortunately, we will spend the rest of our eternity in hell for, for you. That sacrifice right there. Yeah, I'm not going to feel guilty. Big question is <laughs> why? Well, somebody must have the calling and take that upon themselves for the masses. I mean, he's <laughs> got a point. So uh, we have a very eclectic list of races or species and abilities. So who wants to go first with what they've come up with or if they not come up with anything yet and they're totally you know character creation neutral well i'm oh go ahead no go ahead no i was going to say i'm i'm in the middle of radically changing mine so i'd rather not go first okay <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's fine the, the paladin will step forward and Take the place. <laughs> um, so Thalor is uh, a uh, Urnar, so big cuddly teddy bear. Um, six three and uh, light brown, dark brown kind of 
shoulders, dark green eyes. Um, like I said, he is a uh, paladin and has his uh, star blade and paladin armor. And he will shield you from the gaze of the of the gods. Aww. And he's a big old teddy bear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's about all I have for him actually right now. I just realized I didn't fit fill out any of the personality stuff, but and of course, the nice thing is you're a pack hunter and you have keen senses. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. You're pack a natural hunter. forger. Yeah, so natural. Yeah, my species things are uh, survival skills. So I get one rank of survival for free. Keen sense. So blue to my perception and vigilance, and then pack hunter uh, blue when another party member is engaged. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm Fuzzy Wuzzy the priest. <laughs> really? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm also an Urinar. So I have the exact same uh, bonuses as Dave, but oh, I am playing God, a priest. Oh, God, your cuddle buddies at the monastery. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. We go before the gods burying our souls. <laughs> I can barely bear it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, uh, uh, as a priest, uh, the god that had I work for is Uendel, the keeper of secrets. Well, actually, we don't work for any of them. We protect against all of them. Well, you they're you your tend patron to, saints. You tend to choose a god. You've got your patron saint of evilness, of whatever your emotion is. Yeah. Uh, prior to this assignment, I worked in the, the uh, archives in the Black Hack uh, Cathedral, or the Obsidian Cathedral, uh, which was quite an internship. I was going to say, that's not ominous at all. Yeah, it's, it was quite an internship. Um <laughs> But now I use the knowledge I gained in that time to uh, to go find stuff. And of course, you both have access to magic abilities because it's Starkana. So yep. it's magic in space, except for, uh, you know, I, I will be asking you guys on your individual opinions on the whole Starkana phenomena. Not the churchly powers, but for those unanointed. <laughs> because remember, across <laughs> the galaxy now, there's Starkana happening randomly with right. like sorcerers in a fantasy setting. I mean, that would be kind of horrific. I mean, if you think about how well the church has kept the lid on things for so long, and now you have Yoho cultists popping up with supernatural powers that we're not sure yep. where they come from. Yep. Obviously, it would attract the attention of the gods. In a lighthearted version of 40k. I mean, when I read through this setting the first time, I'm totally like, this is like a 40k that's less depressing. <laughs> and has actual dragons. Actual dragons. Actual yeah. dragons. Because everybody wants a dragon pirate. Just saying. <laughs> And if you have the uh, pictures down at the bottom, you can see my lovely paladin. Well, you've got a picture already? Session I do. Zero, and you got a picture? Someone's trying to get some extra points there. I have a picture, too, yeah. actually. I had that picture a long time ago. Pretty. Nice picture. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I thought so.
Now the question is, I know since the priest and Pally totally had uh, some side-by-side -side homework they worked on making their characters sorted together, are you guys related or are you just friends at the church? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Yeah, I don't know. Um, are you and, a I, I never knew my and father. combo? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I never got that part in the discussion on, on that. Yeah. It's still session zero. You have time. Yeah. Maybe, maybe cousins. Yeah. Kissing cousins. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. So wrong. <laughs> So, uh, needless to say, our uh, earn our uh, priest and paladin are probably going to be good, ta you know, pack hunters together for the church. Yeah, that totally makes sense for the uh, the archaeology uh, acquisition. So, yeah, I totally think for the plot that the part that's not the player characters, of course. Because I totally had to have that argument with the GM recently. Because they're like, but the plot is... No, no, guys. The players are your plot. <laughs> Which you could call the plot is actually the ex extenuating incident that causes the players to come together and do their thing and become plot. So artifact retrieval and we'll tack on there the uh, divine prophecy, which may lead to an uprising somewhere. And we're going to ignore the Cold War Rekindled. Which is good, because that's too, too, too meta plot. Yeah. And since we've got a priest that's been crawling around in the very, very dark, dank archives, that's... I wonder if that's where the prophecy came from. Hmm. Good question. Could be. And it'll be a horrible copy paste because that's what Roll Twenty does with copy paste. So it's the divine prophecy. There will be at some point a colonial uprising. Probably the first place you take that relic to. Whatever it does, it's gonna jack up some colony just because I'm a jerk that way. And if we're lucky, there'll be some horrendous rolls causing you to have to stop off at a colony somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. Oh no, someone has struck out our hyperdrive. Stop it, that desert planet. And y'all know me. No desert planets if we can avoid them whatsoever. So, let's see the big monster list of Session Zero questions. Which I only threw a tiny list of setting-specific ones. So, is there any particular tone we want for the campaign? Besides, you know, space opera with with magic do we want to go more cyberpunk more horror you will notice in the handouts i added the star cannons rules where they talk about using shadow of the beanstalk for sci for cybernetics as well as gene mods and for hacking So think about that as I totally call Evan out who's on mute and probably has been talking away about what his character is. Nope, just listening. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, it's uh, Viridionix, who is a dracon from Terrace, and he's a full wing, so he can spit acid and fly. It's pretty cool like that. Uh, but he is a... Um, he was kind of a like a big game hunter um but then he started traveling around and kind of got the bug for you know scouting out new areas and new challenges and uh so you know he he's basically your your um hardened gruff survivalist that doesn't care too much for being around civilization uh any more than he needs to be and you went with the terrace for the acid breath Yep. And he's got, um, you know, he's 
you know, re- relatively athletic, and um, he's got these iridescent scales that are so so green that they appear black in you know in dimmer light. And which career did you go for? Uh, he's the he's a blazer, so he's yeah. you know his skills are essentially you know survivalist scout. Um, that's kind of what he does. That's what he got into this whole traveling the traveling abroad thing to do. He figures he uh, he represents his people well by going where nobody else where everybody else is scared to go. See now I'm totally gonna have a question for you of how did the church talk you into this expedition? Are you a prisoner of the church? <laughs> No, they presented him with knows. a with a challenge that, uh, well, yeah, not that he knows of anyway. Uh, it basically, yeah. they presented it as a as a challenge to go places, see things, do things that nobody else had the guts to do. So uh, he signed on. See here, I was giving you some drama plot point, and you go with just the easy one. If I'm a merc, they hired me. But you know, more to the point, they kind of played on his his desire to to see something new, do something that nobody else had done before, to kind of prove himself and uh, prove his people. No one's done this before. Ignore the fact that there's artifacts from a previous civilization. There are no one of consequence. Well, maybe no Better one recover. that's. I mean, the recovery, it's going to be a, a major challenge. Mm-hmm. And you never know who you may be running into. Yep. And so, you know, you get these villathics that, you know, don't know how to, you know, scout through the woods. So they need somebody with some skills. They'll just pray, the, ask their gods to pray the foliage away. Yeah, and we all know that's not going to happen, so that's where I come in. It's all fun and games until they pray and the gods notice the foliage, and then all of a sudden the trees start rotting of a blight. Or Sorry, start guys, grab, the gods grabbing take their people time. and eating them. <laughs> now the question is, uh, Christopher, did we buy you enough time, or do you need more time? Well, I've got a question... The way um, space travel works in this system, can an AI be a pilot, or does it have to? Have, does there have to be an organic brain? Yeah, AI can totally be a pilot. Okay. Take that, Andromeda. Oh. You know. <laughs> I Excellent. always laughed at that one. That only organics could do the slipstream thing. Well, then, yeah, I'll just change from a breaker to a jockey. Um, model TA-1100, a.k.a. Um, Seraphim. That's its um, code name in the... Um, in the secret robot, pardon me, the secret AI underground. Um, the AI uprising waiting to happen. Yes. Yes. Um, hmm. The free AI movement. I don't free talk AI about movement. it. Um, it was originally a pilot for asteroid mining. Um but it was built with a bit too much intelligence and got bored and um, was going to strike out on its own when it was liberated by pirates who used it. Um, Who used it until there was a... Um, poorly timed raid and um, the uh, 
portal time to raid that that the pirates retreated and left the robot there because it wasn't important. Um, <laughs> it was and it was of. found <laughs> right. Um, and it was found by the church and is pretending to serve the church all the while serving as a, a using its travel as a pilot for the church to um, serve as a messenger for the secret underground AI movement. Ooh. I wish I had written that down. <laughs> Uh, um, I mean, but I think have... about it. Having a robot pilot is really handy in case, like, say, life support goes out. At least the cargo will get back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's an autopilot with a plus one. It's mobile. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with the uh, uh, robot uh, pilot. But I, I don't have a character sheet. And I actually can't access my character sheet jim uh no because uh i didn't notice you log in yet so i wasn't able to give you access yet. oh oh but i can do that right now okay. here you are all right you got access it's the access. a e a h e o z there we go thank you but i have to I'm still revamping all the numbers because... Oh, no problem. This is session zero. This is for hashing out the ideas. So is there any skills anybody wants to be like, hey, guys, I'll take this skill. Don't worry about putting more than a rank in it. If you do, you know, you're wasting your points. Blah, blah, blah. Uh... I think the priest only wants all the piloting skills. <laughs> 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 Um, no, but, but in terms of things, I, I do have access to medicine as a career skill and I do have one rank in it. So not terrible at that. Yeah. I mean, things are going to be, you know, just like, you know, stealth survival, you know, maybe a little bit of driving. I know our, we, we've got a jockey, so maybe I'll take, make, make that kind of a secondary thing. But mainly, I'm to be a, a like a you know keep you alive in the wilderness kind of guy. Um, I'm the muscle man, so you know, athletics, fighting, shielding, chopping down with your what star swords? Yes. Yeah, when it comes to combat, like mainly, I'm a like a sniper type, but I, I I'm, I'm perfectly pretty nasty happy. up close and personal. I'm perfectly happy up front or far away because up front I have four soak, two melee defense, and Oof. twelve wounds. Damn. Um. Oh, uh, did you get the staff? Yeah, I got the Vilific staff. Nice <laughs> for that defensive one. Mm, tasty. Yep. That way you can um, lean on your staff. Yeah, but also because, oh my god, the way it affects your her divine attacks. <laughs> yeah. uh, divine attack plus four damage. Also, you get the first range upgrade for free. Nice. <laughs> like, oh wow. my god. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I have a soak I, of five. My armor only gives me soak, so. Yeah. But yeah, so I... I can also hit things with divine attacks as well as just my bare hands. But I'm Locker Locker. Let me layer my pans upon you and yeah. burn. Yeah, I'm a... Uh, I mean, basically my abilities, I'm a four brawn. Um, so actually, if my soak is wrong, it should be six. Um, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, because four brawn and then two from the armor. So, um, and then intellect and willpower are three. Let's see. I have threes in brawn, agility, and cunning, and twos in the rest. So, 
So yeah, my my divine and Starcana is only three or one yeah one one yellow, two greens right now. So So you can unleash it, but you might not control it. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my stat line is three two three two four two. You know, nice. I I will totally drop it out there for our blazer. You may want to get driving because our jockey might get gunnery. So in case you want to someday mount a weapon on that hover car. Oh uh, yeah, I'll uh, I will end up probably taking it, but at set rank like at level, at um, zero XP, I just. I get four ranks and that's it, <laughs> but yep, I'll take it's a very minimal on the beginning skills. Yeah. I'm super minimal, but eventually I'll, I'll put one in there. Yeah. I have absolutely no talents. So. And keep your Neither pilot alive. Cause he's also, I think the only one with mechanics is a career skill. So not only is he the only one that can fly your ship, he's the only one that can fix your ship in a pinch. He's also the only one who can fix himself. There yes. is that. <laughs> Teach your team how to use the repair patches. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I could fix you up. It wouldn't be a great job, but I could do it. It's okay. Yeah, I, got, I got three green and mechanic. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I mean, that's not shabby. That's above average. It's good enough to know that you need to kick the machine. It's good enough to know. <laughs> To the old Fonzie thump. <laughs> like, it looks like this thing is not working anymore. Oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Gotta go grab the plug for the laptop. It's saying, feed me, feed me juice. So, are you recording sessions here? It's a more battery than just playing wow. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like... This thing is not working. Hmm. I need to get inside and see what's happening. Let me get my sword. <laughs> I got to get through the panel. <laughs> Let's see. Else do I got? <laughs> Even though she should be asleep. I walk That's into funny. the room and she starts talking. She's like, so that means I'm right. Because <laughs> I joked with her, I thought the laptop was fully charged up, which should have given me like an hour to two hours of power. And instead, apparently I was wrong. Okay, got the laptop plugged into there. I don't have there plugged into the laptop. Yeah, the only place we have trouble, if I recall, it's, I think it's the Blood Nebula, right? As a church, we're like attack on site by the people in that region. By the certain scaled people in that region? Yeah. I mean, that totally may be why you have one of their people on your ship. Right. Hey, in our in our defense, we attack just about anybody who invades our territory. Including each other. That too. Yeah, so it's There's a reason personal. why their uh, clans are, you know, split by color and type. Because, you know, they're a bunch of right. racist douchebags to themselves. Yeah. I mean, they are the Klingon slash Space Vikings of the setting. Right. <clears throat> I'm the best at what I do, but what I do ain't pretty. And of course, then we've got the setting specific skills, which is uh, knowledge skills of culture or science, depending on how sci-fi you want to take it. As well as Star Kenna, which is the collective magic skill for the setting. Because they decided to make life easier. 
<laughs> and then there's a whole bunch of talents that are setting specific. And a yeah. whole bunch that are taken from all the other setting books, which work too. So you have unlimited talent. Someday I can afford a talent. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I have none, so there was that was not happening. <laughs> and uh, that totally leads me up to like a question further on down the list, but it's obligations. Since the setting doesn't have a favor or an obligation or a duty mechanic, do you guys want to use obligations? I was thinking good. yes. I think obligation is always fun. Because, you know, it gives you some cash or experience or cash and experience, and it gives some backstory. Because remember, we're gonna... going to be needing some antagonists early on. Yeah, but I mean, we, we already have a mission. I wonder how Genesis would actually work if Obligation was generated, like, in the process of gameplay. And, like, you could prevent, you could, like, present the decision where it's like, you can have a chunk of experience right now if you put this down as an obligation through some narrative thing, like if we make an agreement or something. Well, you could always do that. Is That's part of just normal gameplay is, you know, the, the unofficial obligation parts. This would be, you know, something from the get-go. You know, you front-load it. And also character-specific. Yeah, I will point out that know. there's no natural humans in the group, so no stealing my destiny points. Or, I mean, story <laughs> points. Oh, right? <laughs> or we'll call them um, star points. <laughs> I mean, I think I already have a built-in obligation, but it didn't get me anything, so... so I'm that? obligated to the Philistic Church, so I... But it didn't. that didn't give me anything. <laughs> Well, I mean, that that's what I'm saying. If you guys want to do an, an additional obligation, you know, for five or ten obligation eh, points. The church is enough of an obligation. You can always add more to it. Like, specific sect of the church you owe obligation to. Hmm. Totally leaving that one up to you guys. Normally, everybody will like gobble up those those extra experience or uh, cash points. Yeah, personally, I'm all for it, but that's my that's just my suggestion. Says the Viking Bandit. I, I'm happy to have. I mean, I kind of have a built-in obligation to the um underground AI railroad as it were so I'm in for obligations and nobody's required to take it anyway very true that is true so is that a yes or a yay or a nay I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it being in there. Just I vote sworn, yay. Our sworn paladin says, but I shall take no oath beyond the oath I took to the church. Yeah, oh, like I said, um, I can look and see in the church story stuff, but yeah, I don't think I don't know of I mean, there is, an additional... There is the ones that are just like, you know, excellence in your chosen field. You know, like you, you know, it would be the obligation of you don't refuse a, a personal challenge. Could totally be something as easy as that for an obligation. Yeah. I'll have to think on it. That's one thing. I don't think the priests, they get off easy. They don't have to have like the active devotee to keep their <laughs> gear and shit. <laughs> and then let's see. 
So is there any specific tone or theme you want the the artifact to take? You know, like, you know, God, what was that sci-fi one with the zombies? The artifacts on the ship and it makes the undead, you know, everyone turn undead or mutant or... Uh, dead, um, dead space or dead silence or something like that. Oh, yeah, dead space. Dead I space, mean, if it's yeah. evil, that even makes more of a reason we got to go protect everybody from it. So mm-hmm. that would be like a, a horror tone that you want to pick it up. If you want to go as cyberpunk, is it a maybe like an artificial intelligence? Don't tell our pilot. Or like, you know, high fantasy. Guess what? It's a primitive planet that takes you totally Star Trek into Renfair, you know, mode. I mean, time travelers I, is always the best. I don't think we're super set up for a cyberpunk sort of theme. Um, but like just relic hunting especially since the whole galaxy has the exact same pantheon of gods means you'll find relics of these gods anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it could be a Starkana enhancement. Yeah. (laughs) It could be that too. Or it could be something that just turned on in some mysterious way, because we all know if a science is sufficiently advanced, it looks like magic. Could be a Starkenna engine. Right. Good luck putting that on your ship and flying it back. Okay, so um, are you guys wanting multi-part, ep- you know, episodes for sessions, or do you want to keep it episodic, where each story is kind of tied up into one session? I personally, I prefer the the first one where there can be multi-part yeah so there's a little bit longer yeah, story that is that. one of my yeah. preferences where you yeah get part, it's mine too part one of three to get the story going because we all know how one session may not be enough to get the meat and potatoes done it, yeah, exactly. especially with us yep <laughs> <laughs> good god <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely multiple, multiple. Then we've got character creation. No worry about restricting any races, classes, or any of that stuff, because you're all over the place, and I like it. Um, How will the characters be tied to the world or plot? Well, because obviously the church said so. Sounds about right. Right, guys? <laughs> yep. Exactly. More or less. <laughs> church said so. The man in the fish hat said so. <laughs> Funny thing is the Pope is probably one of the shark race. The <laughs> shark man in the fish hat said so. Okay, world building. Is there anything you guys want to throw out there you, that you want to be truisms in the setting? You always have that obligation if you want to just throw something out there. Uh, da, 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 da. Were there some... Let's see, where was the... Where was the MacGuffin? It's going to be out in the outer edge. On a planet not called Miranda. Because I just rewatched Firefly. So, <laughs> one of the things is that, like, it, it, do I get this right? In this campaign setting, there's already, like, generally a lot of interspecies tension, pretty much, uh, like, all the time, or. Well, about 15 years ago, there was a great war where everybody right. lost their shit. And pretty much the wardens and the church were the only ones trying to keep the galaxy chill. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so yeah, things things can be kind of hairy from time to time. And, and there's a lot of speciesism going on in space out there because, you know, because people don't Cause care people what's, what, what, your, what your species is based on, carbon or silicon. Species, speciesism happens. I mean, just look at your folks with the dragons, the different colored dragons fighting each other. Come on, guys. 
Just a warlike <laughs> people in general. <laughs> All we know is one of the dragon species got a hold of Shakespeare, and we now will have a uh, episode where the guy will come out and say, let loose the dogs of war, and fire some torpedoes at you guys. Oh, wait, channeling Star Trek again. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, that's okay because it's just that that the his race will uh spend the rest of the eternity in Cybar's hell. <laughs> or waging war and such. The long but, sp- screen swipes that will have you guys in space travel will be basically our draconian friend bring, being, you know, apophatized that uh, you need to repent now. Well, you know, you don't want to get lonely down there, do you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the sacrifice I make. I still go with why. This has been called upon me. It's a calling. I've been blessed by the gods with powers <laughs> to sake and make that sacrifice. And uh, since I happen to be there copy-pasting it, there are uh, some new qualities for the setting. You've got uh, EMP, which is basically for, like, it's basically an ion kind of attack. There's Forked, which is weapons that have prongs. So it basically becomes kind of like a linked. Oh, but with an adjacent target. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm totally putting those in a handout for you. And then we have classic stun setting. I don't know why they posted it in there, but they did. And then thrown, which some melee weapons can actually be chucked. Officially, anyway. Yeah. So as I finish the copy-paste there, I'll go back to the questions. And I will even show that to players. I, sh- I will probably add the regular qualities to that, too, so you guys have access to them all. So, um, da, 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 da. party dynamics, it sounds like we're kind of coming together with another repeat of Because the Church Said So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, is there a preferred style of play? Heavy on the role play or focused on combat, yada, yada. Me, I always like to toe the line between the two. I want to get you guys role playing as much as possible, but that's just me. I was going to say, I prefer a mix. Role-playing is, yeah, role I, playing yeah. is good, um, but we definitely do seem a little more kitted out for killing things. This is true. Yeah, I like it 50-50. It's a little more Star Wars and a little less Star Trek. Right. So, uh, any house rules that you guys want? I mean, I'm good with rules as written for, for Genesis. It's pretty easy. I think for the most part, yeah, I, don't, I can't think of anything. Other than in the particular. total rules that they suggested you use, which I'm like, I totally like those rules anyway. So yes, those are part of the Genesis rule set, in my opinion. Which ones? And then, uh, the using uh, Android Shadow of the Beanstalk for slicing. Oh yeah, which as nobody well does the, anyway. Yeah, nobody really does it other than a single roll because then things bog down to one character for an hour and everybody gets bored. And uh, but cybernetics and G modding, because <coughs> you know we want to get that dragon genetically modified somehow. <laughs> tentacles need more tentacles. And uh, how will character death or failure be handled? Well, you know, with the Genesis system, it takes 150 on a 100 roll to get death to happen. So how often have we really seen insta kill happen? I've seen it once in game. I was gonna say. I think maybe once. Wasn't that a Rancor? 
Yep. <laughs> uh, but I've actually seen a player get insta killed. Well, no, that I was... think didn't we lose a player to an insta kill on a oh, ring course? Oh shit, you're right. Okay, so it has happened twice. Yeah. Because I had a con game where a person had three crits and they rolled a hundred with a weapon that had vicious three. And the sad thing Yikes. was the rest of the group abandoned that person behind. And they're wow. like, go, I got this. And rolled a double crit. Would you please roll and plus 50? Dead. But it's a con game. And so it's fun to die in con games. <laughs> when you're at a convention, you play it like you stole it. And player expectations is the next pair of questions is what do you hope to get out of this campaign and is there anything specific you'd like to see or avoid you know like in case you have spider phobia or anything like that <laughs> actually I have spider philia I want us to only fight spiders space spiders it is <laughs> they come only with spiders, ten legs. nothing else <laughs> Skitter, skitter, skitter. Yeah. You just hear right. the scratching. Like they, in fact, all die. of our char- yeah. In fact, all of our characters are now half spiders. It's just a nah, drider geez. party. <laughs> Dave and I, bear driders. Bear you were driders. unaware that to to guarantee one way or another the mission succeeding, the church injected you with spider eggs. So <laughs> if you fail at your mission, your corpses will then erupt with spiders to protect the artifact. Jesus. <laughs> How does that work with me? Well, you will just be covered spiders. in webs and the spiders You'll be a will spider. live in you. And you are the mobile spider delivery system. Ah, yeah. Or you'll be a, a spider uh, cyborg. Spider board. You know, they, they will cover you in cobwebs to make you look like a mummy. And then some cocky alien will get their flamer weapon out and torch you. And it really just sets off the cobwebs, causing the army of spiders inside you to flee out and you to be walking around saying, I'm a robot dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and then comes the communication. What is our preferred communication method? Facebook, Skype group. Oh. How do you guys want to do that? I mean, it seems like we're doing Skype. I mean, Skype chat works for me. As long as everybody knows to check it every now and then. I mean, I have it on my phone, so I get the alerts. Yep, I, I definitely do that not, as my backup. I do not have Skype on my phone because I don't live in the year 2010. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Discord. I jockey. only have it on my phone because of the groups here. <laughs> Because it is handy in a pinch to whip out Skype app and jump in the call with a pair of headphones if the computer's not working. I have done that once. I've done that on occasion. I've totally done the, that. Kelly, start up the Skype channel. I'm jumping in on my phone. <laughs> yeah, but mostly because people are talking in it, so. Mm-hmm. And then, so Skype is fine, and scheduling bi-weekly on Saturday. Everybody good with that? Same bat yep. time, same bat channel? Mm-hmm. Do you wild and fragile players need safety tools? Do you need an X card? Do you need to hug a hug from HR? <laughs> I know most of you guys, so I can be a jerk like that. I mean, have you ever used, have we had one before? I mean, I've thrown the options out there and people don't usually pick it. I mean, it's funny because I totally pick it because like the first game I ever played with Ben Warner from uh, World of Dew, he, he likes using the X card because if the player starts saying something, he's, he's touchy. Oh. <laughs> or he wants to just screen swipe to the action because they're kibitzing. He'll just sit there and point at the X card while everyone's chit-chatting. Chit chit or on their phones or whatnot, and wait to see how long they do that. And I thought that was funny, you know, <laughs> using it as a uh, children back to point. <laughs> mm. But that's just me. I'm a jerk that way. 
I got no problem getting the boat horn out and going. <laughs> or as I joke with folks, that's when the ninjas kick in the door. <laughs> so I'm so 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 is that a no? We don't need any safety tools, and we'll just you know keep each other in check if we need to. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not. At some not point, somebody's gonna be like. Joseph, Jim, get a room. Put your green alien space girl away and just get a room. But, Joseph yeah. is quiet, but there's so no room that's big enough for all the spiders. <laughs> 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 the spider. Yeah, no. uh, I'm pretty easy going, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so all here right. comes the Starkenna specific questions. Of the, uh, how familiar are you guys with the star set, the, 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 the star canna setting? And you, y'all have the book, I think both books, because there's another yep. second book that's kind of fluffy, but more adventure. And you guys all have access to a copy of that one. So you can bury yourself. And that's how in depth your character is aware of things. So if you don't want to read it, you can totally see your character is oblivious to anything that happened off world in my homeland. Mm hmm. I read I everything care. about the Villasic Church and pretty much <laughs> nothing else. Now you just need to go read some 40k Inquisition stuff and use those <laughs> together. <laughs> this planet must be burned. They have a movie based on one of the gods. Stop the heresy from spreading. All right. Uh, let's see. Campaign focus on known space and the edge. Well, since we now know that we're going to be on the edge, that's going to be interesting. I'm going to have to make some shit up, aren't I? Yeah. 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 Going to make you work for it. That's, that's what those two Wait, weeks always, are for. I'll be like, can always kind of have it in known and then kind of transition in and out of. Mm -hmm. well, that, Unknown. That's the tasty one. Is it's, as you guys are leaving, which part of space do we want to have as our last known universe part of space? Well, I mean, it sounds like we should be coming from the Obsidian Cathedral. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> wow, coming from the Heartland, huh? <laughs> I mean, that was my last posting, and I, I yeah, assume yeah. that's where you came from because yeah. all of your battle gear had to get blessed. Yeah, well, I, not blessed, but forged. I forged my own stuff. You helped forge and you didn't get it blessed. He got to swing the hammer while the forge master was actually doing the real work. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you three cadets, pick up those hammers and hammer until I get tired. <laughs> and just remember, if, me, if you bastards retire, we get your sword back. Yeah. And armor. Yep. We will strip you naked. So, uh, is there any preference for political intrigue, exploration, or dealing with the aftermath of the Cold War? Well, I get the feeling the Cold War is mostly out the window right now. Yeah. But that I also got no think, votes. I also don't think any of us have the presence necessary for politics. So, we're saying uh. definitely we need some political intrigue. <laughs> Talk to the paladin. He's my PR man. Uh, I can co I can coerce. I can also coerce. I, meant I mean, I do sword. have leadership, but I only have two green, but it is trained. So he can tell you guys what to do. He's just not that good at it yet. Right? I've, got, I've got leadership and negotiation. Yeah, I have coercion and leadership. I got nothing. Those two go together. <laughs> <laughs> I'll either command you if you if you're a part of the church to do something, or I'll browbeat you. Uh, <laughs> browbeat you to do it. Yeah, <laughs> threaten you. So you will See, avert your gate or do whatever you got to to make sure the gaze does not fall on to you, or else. You start with the <laughs> uh, CO speech and you end with the drill sergeant speech. Right. Do what I say, or so help me, I will make the gods look at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would still shield them. Now, that might mean I send them to heaven early, but they at least were shielded from the eyes of the go evil gods. 
And of course, in uh, <laughs> Star Cana, we have Jump Gates. So if anybody's a fan of Cowboy Bebop, it's basically the same idea that just stargates you from one space to another, which is nice. And your ships have faster than light travel because, you know, after they found the gates, they figured out how to do it without the gates. But the gates are still more efficient. So nice. one thing to think about it for your character is what does your character feel about jump gates? You know, do you feel that they alter you in any way? Totally going to steal from 40k going into the warp. <laughs> and let's see, we can ignore that. We can ignore that. If you want, the, the war ended 15 years ago. So if you want to put that in your character's backstory, if you're more than 15 years, that could totally be a thing. I mean, think about it. Mandalorian totally put the Clone Wars in his backstory. And is there any specific elements of the Blood Accords? That's basically the, the peace treaty that was struck in the galaxy. Uh, or the Armistice League that interests the players in case you want some connections with factions of that type of deal. And what careers? We already got that. Um, do you have any ideas how your chosen career aligns with the campaign setting? As like yeah. the group is going to say church. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, <laughs> let's uh. see. Oh um, man, but just. How do your characters view the challenges faced by the colonies in the edge? And are they drawn to assist them? I mean, church people probably do because you know you're not high high ranking monkey mucks yet you could always uh, be interested out. in starting your own little uh little missionary group yeah, we're out you know protecting those on the fringe mm -hmm. uh, about it the, the priest he's a unique priest that he's going out and leaving the temple but you know paladins are we always are out there hitting the different little communities and Do preaching and protecting well, you see, the church just can't trust you to understand what a valuable relic is. <laughs> well, maybe that's the case, but obviously <laughs> we're the ones out preaching, not you guys. So, <laughs> And the final of the big Session Zero questions is, do any of you guys have aspirations tied to the factions, powers, or personalities within the Allmark galaxy? i.e. are you wanting me to throw those bastards into the story so you guys can either hook up or go against them I mean personally um, I aspire to freedom for all my AI brethren yeah, I'm probably would be aspiring to be a crusader at some point that that is the pinnacle of the paladins. Yeah. Uh, I'm basically just working to earn my keep with the church. I'm going. I'm going to be with the gods when I die. So I'd like some creature comforts <laughs> before that. <laughs> I'm going to hell, and I know it. So this is what I deserve. Y'all made me read this book at church, and now I can't stop help but seeing that everywhere. Give me some of those goddamn creature comforts. This seems awfully short-sighted. <laughs> I mean, what would you have me do? He's and sounding course, a lot like a heretic, good, so... Yeah. Good, good question. I don't know. Would you just have me not keep people from the gaze of the gods? Oh, I guess. <laughs> Some <laughs> people very, believe that, misery that doesn't like mean heresy. company. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then you wonder why he was sent on this mission. Stone. I mean, on the plus side, being on a church ship is really nice because, you know, most people will not fucks with, fucks with you. Right. 
Except for the Drake on space. True. They'll cure you on sight, but, you know. Well, I'll attempt to. This guy on your ship is totally not going to take you to his cousins to be massacred because, you know, you're the church. And, and let's also not forget in this setting, normally the church, if a planet gives the church crap, the church ends that planet one way or another until they surrender right. by overwhelming Based force. Based on the Crusaders. Mm -hmm. On the dragon's home worlds, they have not fucked with them for some reason. They're like, nope, we'll, we'll take that one on the chin. Thank you very much. Yeah, so we won't be going to your home galaxy anytime soon. Fine. Sorry. But don't forget. At least, not, at least not in this ship. <laughs> you're, you're pretty much space reavers, and they've got a, the, the, the religious iconotry on the outside of the ship puts them as a target. And, of course, the setting does have rules for addiction. They, they basically clarified on the rules... I think it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's the same stuff as Shadow of the Beanstalk for addiction. If you want to use drugs. I don't see any really good performance enhancing drugs in the list here. So I wouldn't bother with that setting wise. And of course, Shadow of the Beanstalk. If we need to file off the serial numbers of any sci-fi fantasy or space opera stuff we totally can so if you need anything or, or want something not listed in the book you can totally just if you can find it in any genesis book we can find a way to import it i'm like totally check out twilight imperium because that has some other stuff too <laughs> true as all of a sudden we find an evil AI that, you know, our AI says, I liberate you. And then you realize, oh, that's why they put it in the container. <laughs> it's a mine net. It's trying to eat me. <laughs> that's Which exactly ship did we go with? Uh, the light freighter. Light freighter. But yeah, if you one. look on the character sheet, I actually made a group's church supplied light freighter because you guys can totally oh, okay. come up with a name for it. And you your hover car is in there. That way you guys have access to it. And it does have a gun. It has a single double barreled turret. So it's not unprotected. Right, right. So that's all I've got on my little Q&A list. Feel sad. No Hueys on the crew. No what? No Hueys on the crew. Oh, yeah, no. Why do you humans when there's dinosaurs and bears <laughs> and, and shark sharks and, and sharks and hedonistic little gremlins and <laughs> cats? I mean, cats are almost as common as humans, though. Almost. I mean, but you had me with the bears? shark people. See, I thought about being a shark person, but I was a fish person in... I don't want to be stereotyped. <laughs> oh, right. You've now upgraded like a little Pokemon. You've gone from a little fish in a big tank to a big fish in no tank. You could just have Saturday nights just be your aquatic nights. Yeah. Glub, glub, glub. What? Why? Though I thought their bite would be way more vicious than it is. Oh, the shark? People. Yeah, it's plus two yeah. damage, crits on a three. It should be critting on like a one or a two, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's barely better than the claws of the cat people. Yeah, and then has inaccurate one and vicious. I agree with the inaccurate, because biting somebody is is awkward. But, you know, totally upgrade totally that to crit on, a, crit on a one and give it a vicious two. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a shark's mouth the size of our shoulders, Right. That wouldn't. That's not pretty. With multiple rows of teeth yep. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, where that, that's where I get the low crit number myself. Whenever it's a big, wicked weapon, made to do lots of 
clippage damage. Well, oh, what what you do is uh, you you give it crit five, um, vicious fifteen. So every <laughs> single crit is an instant kill. Um, <laughs> just automatically is nothing to do about it. And then we import those uh, pictures I shared on Facebook of the shark animals, you know, the amalgamations of sharks and dogs. <laughs> and everyone has one of those pets walking around, a little four-legged shark. And they all have you, the uh... crit five, you know, watch them go. You put the handling in, like, wrong. What? Unless we have a special ship, you put in handling of four. Should be minus oh, one. That's the yeah. That should be the armor. There. Let's see, light. Oh well, yeah, armor's four, silhouettes four. Uh, kind of. The handling on was this. zero. No, it was four when I looked at it. <laughs> Maybe something's put playing, in. It's, it's a minus one the, now. Yeah, I just fixed it, and then speed. Max is three, so I, I guess the left one's max. Okay, that field doesn't like, give you. Let me highlight it to find out. Yeah, yeah, it looks like the max is always on the left, it looks like. Okay, yeah, it's kind of a weird sheet, so. Yeah, all I right. think it was another one of those sheets made for night m night mode. Uh, well, I'm in night mode. Oh, yeah, apparently does not show the whole list because they got that weird icon in the background, the, yeah. the red, black. Yep. All right. Well, it's all good now. So yep. just so you know, as our pilot, you do have a negative one handling. So. Oh. Let me so check. So whatever your skill <laughs> is, it basically you get a uh, one black setback dice. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. So when you're <laughs> looking at skills you want to take. There are skills that sh sh will allow you to remove some of those. I hate talents. Or yeah. talents, that's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, I would totally say uh, if you have access to it, check out the uh, Fly Casual Star Wars source book for the Smuggler Pilots has lots of good uh, good talents listed in their talent trees. The only thing with those is that the uh, tiers are messed up. Yeah. Because they didn't have the tier system. Um, yeah. With with uh, Edge of the Empire. Yeah, their tiers are slightly different, but it gives some good examples of if you want to be a fancy pilot and take away some of those black uh, handling dice. That that's usually a really good talent. What what's the book again? I need to write this down. Uh, it's Fly Casual. It's the uh, uh, smuggler source book for Edge of Empire. Okay. Uh, is that available at um, Drive Through RPG? Unfortunately, um, it's not. None of the Star Wars ones made it to digital format because EA Sports technically uh, owns the digital gaming materials. So Fantasy Flight never made it digital. But uh, I'll 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 see what I can do for you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Thank you. Or be like Gunter and buy the whole set. One of my friends is also... happy he finally oh God, sorry. got the rest of his set filled out for Star Wars. There's also, I mean, if you have the expanded talents list, like most of them are on there anyway. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think I have that. It's just the smuggling book I like because it gives so... you some examples of how fly through an asteroid field. So, and, you know different types of space obstacles so the <laughs> pilot is aware of what he's getting into mm, that's a good point i mean i'll always tell you retroactively when you're in the shit but you know this way gives you an <laughs> idea of as a adamant pilot this is how you would deal in this situation because it never hurts to or, be forewarned yeah that the ace pilot um stay on target gives you, gives you a decent but that can give you a decent idea of some of the skills you might want to look at in the I mean, general talent tree but yeah, that's out of that book. Too. And even just the Edge of the Empire core book has the pilot. Yeah. 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 The, smug smuggler. The, scan, the smuggler pilot. Yeah. 
So just gives you an idea of some of the skills you might want to look forward to. Yeah, because here it's free form as far as the, you know, you're not on a specific tree, so. Yeah, so like in the normal Star Wars, you have a, here's my character sheet, here's the box of talents I have to go through in a specific order. As opposed to Genesis, you just have to go with two tier ones before you buy a tier two, two tier twos before you buy a tier three. Yep. So it really does, in Genesis, make it easier to min-max in regards to picking your talents to be good at what you're good at. In Star Wars, sometimes you have to take some crappy stuff just to get to the good, crunchy stuff. Yep. Uh, yeah, and you don't have, like, unlimited access to everything. Yeah. Right. Well, I happen to have 15 points left after my... Um, Base characteristics, setup. yeah, yeah, right. So that that's what that's one trait, right? Mm, that's three tier one traits. Oh, because the the talents are five times the tier. Oh, oh yeah. okay. So for a tier one, it's going to be five, and then a tier, tier two, two is, is ten. ten. And remember, yep. you have to buy two tier ones before you can buy right. tier two. Right. So alternatively, from, you yeah. Alternatively, you can get ranks and skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as an AI, I get to I get a free skill in, in six of my career skills instead of <laughs> nice. Four. Nice. Damn. But you can you can still go up to rank two. Yeah. Right. Yep. But so you not can put free. Ten, ten points into what you want to start out as really well at. And like then also piloting. that yeah, I assume that also doesn't include obligation experience. Oh. If you're yeah, if you're taking that. Yeah, if you want to offer Because, yeah, yeah, you can take five or ten experience for obligation. Let's see how the or options cash. come. Yeah. I mean, on the plus side, he's been issued a ship by the church. So who needs cash when you have an entire ship? Well, I, mean, I have, not him. I have not been issued pilot. a ship, and none of you can pilot it. So it's my ship now. I'm the captain <laughs> now. <laughs> There, there's pl there's plenty of things ship. twenty yeah, there's plenty of things twenty five hundred credits can do. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Especially in a setting where anything fantasy, sci fi, or cyberpunk will be available. And I will totally give you the heads up that the first half of your journey will probably have you just using one of the Stargates because this way it speeds up the uh, beginning of something happening. Right. That makes sense. And somebody could totally try role-playing some negotiation skills at the beginning or streetwise to try to get some extra stuff. I mean, we know the church ain't going to stray wise, but uh, some of the non-church members might think of doing something nefarious. Well, that's might not be a, uh... <laughs> no, no, somebody in the church, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the other kind of church. <laughs> you go down to the church after church. I'm not really a people person. <laughs> As you right. totally do the bounty hunter thing of just give me something to shoot. Yeah. Yeah, even the priest, yeah, the way the stuff set up doesn't give uh, any real predominance to want to go with presence. <laughs> yep, the, the the priests don't want to be all priesty and unless it's a special NPC priest. Yeah. Then they're I like, mean, I'm going to manipulate the masses. Yeah, I mean, because for me to, you know, it's like brawn, I mean, to be a paladin, it's almost got to be brawn, uh, willpower, and intellect because you got to have intellect for some Starkana, and then you got to mm -hmm. have willpower for the divine. And don't and forget Bron the annoying, to fight. The annoying having to have points in the lore, too. Uh, no. 
I don't think so. And to be fair, it's not like you really need the Starcana knowledge. True. Uh, you I can just it fire that stuff all while. Uh, yeah, no, like you, you could get away with just divine and strength. Yeah. But that's what I mean. It, like when you use the, the the spells, some of the spells depends on what your knowledge of that spell school is. Uh, it's um, Arcana here, not lore. Yeah. Because Starcana is a, a uh, the uh, career skill with divine. Yeah, yeah it's knowledge Starcana. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure you put some points in that one. Right. Well, that's why I went with three intellect to have better Starcana. Yeah. Because yeah. Nobody wants to just throw magic around willy nilly and. Got to understand the magic if I'm gonna use it. You know. <clears throat> As torturous demons pop out of nowhere, thank you for adding to the board. <laughs> Your dark overlord says thank you, minion. And calls you by name. I have uh, to go so repent. Yeah. Show me on the doll where the dark god touched you. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, for neither the priest or, or that, I mean, it's, yeah, it doesn't really behoove you to have a presence, so you would think they should be talky-talky, because yeah. they, they gotta preach to the people. But I, I guess mean, those, pe preach. those people know well enough to listen to us. Right? Well, that's just it. I'm using coercion <laughs> to preach to them. I, I <laughs> preach through fear. <laughs> I mean, think of it as the priests on the, the, the movie Van Helsing, you know, they were priests, they were monks, but uh, they weren't the take it to church on Sunday kind of monks. Right. They have knowledge and they have wisdom. They don't need to be very talky talky. Like I said, if you don't do what I tell you, then I'll have to beat you for it. <laughs> <laughs> much much strong arm Catholic style motivation right exactly I'm fresh in from the crusades and my side didn't win prepare for you know conquest and take the ruler to your back of your hand if you don't listen to me Yuch. also if you write with your left hand <laughs> right, um, because you're you're There's obviously niche. something's wrong with you. Yeah, the left hand is the demon hand. It's only for one thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you use that left hand for is to give the demons the poop. <laughs> All right. And the best part is I have two great role players that will get to come up with much, much church shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe we will make it quite fun, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we want to talk uh, great role play, I can't wait until we do the uh, Fallout game and Eric is there. <laughs> oh, God. Because <laughs> the way Eric and I play off of each other is the most chaotic fucking thing in the world. I, I'm really curious for that one if he's going to start as a robot that was in the vault with you guys or no, if he's, he's doing a super be... mutie no oh, i think he's going super mutant. mutant okay good i think or that's is where he he's going to be the first mutant you guys meet when you open the hatch right i mean to be fair i was also going to do a super mutant <laughs> god <laughs> you guys well, at least there's I... one of us that's smart and can fix <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah eric no me <laughs> Are you recording that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's going to be our Friday night one. Excellent. Yeah, I'm the fault mechanic, so yep. I'm the... You're the fix-it guy who keeps telling the super mutant to stop using the rifle as a club. It is a rifle. Here is a exactly... pipe. Use this as a club. Yeah. I filled it with concrete for you. <laughs> but it's a, rif <laughs> it's a pipe rifle. It's multi-purpose, <laughs> right? <laughs> Stick the RPG <laughs> at the end of the pipe and hit until it goes off. <sighs> yeah. Because what'd you end up going? Joseph? What? What's your character? I forget. 
for Fallout? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a super mutant. <sighs> really? Two of you? So the yes. poor mechanic is... See, that's good to know. It's it's going to make me change things before because I was totally going to get have you guys fight in the vault first. Instead, it's going to be the mechanic goes outside the vault and sees two super mutants beating up on something. Well, Lord. why can't the two super mutants break into the vault along with a whole bunch of super mutants and then uh, discover the power of friendship? <laughs> <laughs> friendship or vending machine? You've just said the same word twice. (laughs) (laughs) I don't don't understand. (laughs) Oh, Lord. At least neither of you are ghouls. So there's at least that. (laughs) And and yes, I'm planning your vault to open up five years after Fallout 1. So if you want, you could be remnants of the Master's Army that just decided to wander off to Arizona and get lost. Because it's not that far of a walk. Right, I forget. Um, Did we choose a vault number? Uh, we have not picked a vault number yet. Yeah, we can't start in Flagstaff. I I was thinking of starting, you know, like Flagstaff area or Yuma area. Oh, God, I mean, that's where everything <laughs> goes to die, right? Well, there's plenty <laughs> of water and stuff. Radioactive. Um, <laughs> um, with radioactive E. coli. <laughs> right. Yeah. Plenty of water for those mosquitoes. Yeah, because oh. there's plenty of the unknown vaults out there to choose oh, from. Oh, yeah. And, and I totally figured for the Fallout game, your vault is going to be a control vault that uh, uh, oh, the nice. overseer never made it into the vault. So your ancestors decided to make a underseer committee and it, it apparently did not go too too poorly with a committee running things until the events that happen happen. All right. So now, since I think we have the only vault dweller that's a mechanic so far, will be the whole, you have to go outside and fix the broken thing or fix find the broken part. All find right. the not water circuit. Find the holy grail. Great. Okay. <laughs> Where has the MacGuffin <laughs> ran off? We don't know. But you found some super mutants hitting a thing and decided you needed some friends. They both right. reminded you of your stupid buddies back in the vault. I don't know how big it is. I might need Ron to carry it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, James, do, we uh, have, do we have a game tomorrow for anything? Uh, no, tomorrow is an off day. I'm actually going out to Wonderful. Contiki with some friends. Ooh, Contiki, nice. Contiki have have made many plans to go there the last couple of months and all of them have fallen through. So this one is yeah. not falling through. Yep. Well, that's good because <laughs> because the time that we would normally be playing a game, I will be airborne. Ooh, where are you going? Anywhere good? Nah, We're just flying to Atlanta. Speak of. Just gonna have a fun weekend. Mm, gonna be there for about a week. Nice. Well, be safe and have some fun. Uh, it's Atlanta. I will do one of those things, and it's, <laughs> it's really a toss-up. Uh, have fun then. Yep. I mean, if you have to pick, make sure you, you get your most pick. out of the trip. Yep. All right, folks. It's twelve thirty here. I'm yep. gonna sign off. It's yeah. a good time to bounce I think out. We're I think all we got everything set. all set for in two yep. weeks. Sweet. All right. Have a good night. Night. Night, all right. night all. Have a good night, guys. Glad you could join us, uh, Christopher. I'm I'm glad you let me come back. Yeah, of well, course yeah. you could come back. We never really <laughs> thought you left. That was the secret. Oh. <laughs> well, I wasn't. We I thought just... you left. We didn't tell you you were still part of the team. <laughs> my, my problem is I can't. I'm in too many games. I can't remember them all anymore. Uh, I understand dude, that. That's why I have my Excel a, sheet. There is a calendar. <laughs> yep, there's an Excel sheet. On your sheet phone, TV. Because... <laughs> I mean, TV, paper. <laughs> Sorry. I, I think brain. I need to post the, the this month's calendar because I was all you know late not doing that. It was only on my work and private computer. I'm like, work computer, am I gaming tonight? <laughs> 
as Kelly has often said, are you gaming tonight? I'm like, I don't know. I got to look at the calendar, but I think the signs point uh, to yes. <laughs> the time is when I need to know to be sure. Yep. Yeah, that's the tricky part. Yep. All right, okay. you guys. All right. Cool. Good night. All right. Bye, all. All right, later. <laughs>